Good afternoon, Nigel. Mm -hmm. um, and firstly, I want to thank the uh, the institute for providing me with yet another opportunity um, and platform on which I can uh, advance my views, etc. Now, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to be here, and it's also a pleasure um, to serve on the panel alongside um, my distinguished colleagues who have actually introduced the topic. So um, I, I noted that we have had an extensive day of discussing um, family-owned businesses, etc. So I don't think within the context I would need to introduce um, family-owned businesses, but also more importantly, I think within the context and the parameters of what, what has been happening um, globally with the pandemic, there is also no need to introduce COVID as well as the impact which it is having on, on the society. Um, however, I do want to make um, a particular a particular segue um, into defining um, exactly what we speak about or what I will speak about as I refer to family-owned enterprises. Um, so in that regard, I, I want to say that family-owned enterprises present themselves with a number of very unique um, features, if you will, if you look at them within the context of the Caribbean. So if you look at, at, at family-owned enterprises in the Caribbean, and I, I want to refer to this as a series of stylized facts, or what I want to term as being the family-ness of enterprises in the Caribbean, um, we can, we, I've, I've, I've mapped out um, quite a, a, a bit of literature on this, um, and I've come up with about nine um, stylized facts, if you will, about family-owned enterprises just so that we lend a bit more context to the discourse on the, on the particular nature of it um, within the Caribbean. So the first thing um, which, which we note is that there is a great degree of informality associated with many family-owned enterprises. And if there isn't the prevalence of a high degree of informality, there certainly is an absence of a high degree of formality as opposed to a corporation um, or even family-owned enterprises in, say, the eastern parts of the world, Asia and, and the Asian subcontinents. Um, what you find also in family-owned enterprises, the second point is that there is also a centralized control of power. So oftentimes you have a singular individual who, um, in Caribbean parlance, calls the shots. What he says goes. Um, and, and following, the third point is that following of um, uh, management psychology is hostile you find that there is a high power distance existing. Um, so that individual who is calling the shot usually ans answers or is answerable to no one within the context of family-owned enterprises in the Caribbean. Um, the other thing is that you find, the fourth point is that you find an equivalence of the business's identity with that individual or with that particular individual's personality. So if, let's say, maybe in, in Trinidad, um, you know, some of the, the popular um, stores and some of the popular general stores or hardware stores have actually been, been, been channeled um, within a particular direction based on the, um, the, the characteristics that define a particular individual who has started an enterprise, etc. Um, you also find that some of these family-owned enterprises, the fifth point is that some of these family-owned enterprises, they are constrained in terms of their resources. So um, oftentimes based on the structure, the, the degree of informality or the absence of, of formality, um, debt and equity institutions tend not to view them as favorably since um, they, they tend to be opaque. In, in their operations and, and the point has been raised earlier about the fact that they are not oftentimes willing to open their books and, and, and let others in, which is an integral part um, of having either um, a debt or an equity partner. Um, the sixth point is that they're, they're based on the management structure is that there is a, 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 an accelerated exposure to risks. Um, there oftentimes is a risk management plan in place, um, and I'll get into that a bit more. Um, the seventh the seven point um, is that there seems to be a high degree of vulnerability to externalities, and that also um, is as a result of the management structure and the absence of the consideration of risk in many of these enterprises. Uh, the eighth point is that there, there tends to be a limited product or service range which is offered. 
So the, the, once again, the management structure tends to contain or constrain um, the nature of how far uh, the firm actually expands. Now, obviously, there will be um, a couple of exceptions, but um, by and large, you find that this tendency towards is something which is very um, prevalent within the Caribbean. And the last point, the ninth point, which I want to raise a stylized facts, just as the preamble, is that enterprises um, that are family owned or, or have this notion of familiness, um, they tend to be internally focused um, and they, they certainly uh, channel a lot of efforts and energies um, toward how the organization um, functions on a daily basis. They tend to be involved in the execution and the, and the executive actions um, of the enterprise. So they're very internally focused, and which is why you find that many of the family-owned enterprises do not um, reach export markets or, or exporting services, etc. They oftentimes remain very localized. So within that context of, of um, those nine stylized facts on families, uh, family-owned enterprises or the familiness of enterprises within the Caribbean, um, I just want to make a couple of points. Now, I'm, uh, I've noted um, many of the speakers, uh, both today as well as, as those serving on the panel, they have, they've made very pointed and specific um, points, and, and, and we have approached the discourse from a point of, of, of deductive, um, the, the methodology towards the discourse has been very deductive. Um, but I am actually going to do the obverse and, and work inductively. So I'm going to take some specific points and then I'm going to map it up towards uh, a broader context within which we can frame um, the, the remainder of the discourse. So the first one which I want to talk about is, is of course, the Caribbean context and the equivalence with the informality. Um, now, each one of these points which I'll raise, I'll actually um, just say very briefly the opportunity which COVID has actually provided for these family-owned enterprises. And you know, um, that notion of informality, um, what it has actually done, it, it, because many of the enterprises that are informal have not been throughout the Caribbean, and I've noticed this um, in Jamaica um, particularly, if you are not registered and if you do not provide your, your relevant documents, um, such as your tax registration and your tax compliance, your business registration, et cetera, you are not eligible um, for any relief from, from the government as regards COVID. Now, this is a very important point because it can actually direct or gear um, enterprises towards the, the, the notion of formalizing, having themselves registered, some of them um, registering to, to, re, to have tax numbers, et cetera. Um, and I also that, that is within the Caribbean, but I've also noticed that tendency occurring um, even in the Asian subcontinent, for example, India, where I keep a very close eye on. Um, now, this is a very important point because the high degree of informality that exists um, impacts or is rampant throughout the private sector in the region. Uh, 2016, uh, Lashley and Nicholson, they have actually penned the text coming out of the University of West Indies, Mona Campus, I believe. It's understanding the Caribbean enterprise. And, and what they found in that um, is that about 70% of the uh, private sector employment in the region can actually be classified as quote unquote family owned enterprises. And they, of course, have their definition of how they regard or how they qualify an enterprise to be a family owned enterprise. So um, that, that's the first point. The second point which I want to make um, is that the notion of corporate structure and the way that many of these organizations are structured, COVID actually has provided an opportunity um, as a result of the first point to ensure that the corporate governance structure which these organizations have lacked over time are actually streamlined. Um, so that point goes without saying. I mean, if, if you have to incorporate the company, many, many of the companies within the Caribbean region are not incorporated. I know in particular in Guyana, um, many persons even doing millions of US dollars in turnover annually, tens of millions of dollars, um, they are not incorporated. Many of them are still operating as sole traders um, or sole proprietors on the business registration, equivalent to perhaps somebody who is just selling in a, in a stall or a small vendor. 
um, uh, on the roadside. So it provides a very good opportunity for one to, to incorporate, have a board of directors, be able to keep management meetings, et cetera. Um, and that in itself, I believe, uh, will spur private sector development in a particular direction within the Caribbean region. Um, of course, if this is encouraged by private sector organizations, such as chambers of commerce and business associations um, in the Caribbean. The other point um, on the this is that um, the point which the colleague who spoke before me alluded to is the notion of succession planning. Many enterprises within the Caribbean do not have succession planning, um, and particularly those that are family owned. Now, remember the stylized fact that I would have raised regarding family owned enterprises is that there is an equivalency existing between the individual, that individual's characteristics, and what the organization manifests. So, the notion of succession planning is certainly not there, but I think the nature of COVID and realizing very sadly that um, death, death um, is an imminent thing um, or, or is a, an imminent possibility uh, within the context of COVID, that there is the absolute necessity for succession planning. Third point, notion of financial uh, financing and financial mechanisms associated with uh, family-owned enterprises. You find that many family-owned enterprises, um, they have, as I would have mentioned, a difficulty obtaining financing because of opaque operations or, or an opaque veil which they place over their operations. This complete inability um, to, to be open to audits, to be open to um, investors coming to see, et cetera. But since uh, COVID and the fact that many financial institutions in themselves have taken a more calculated approach to how they, they, uh, they provide financial products, I think that there has been some degree of innovation on sources of financing. And that in itself are, uh, is beginning to force enterprises, particularly smaller enterprises, to find more innovative ways of financing. So um, there is much more that can be explored on that, but in the interest of time, I'll limit um, how much I'll say on it. The fourth one, um, the fourth point which I want to make is the fact that there, the notion of uh, the Caribbean and our unique nature of, of the way that we have social interactions transcends into businesses and commercial activities. Now, we live in societies in the Caribbean, particularly the, the Anglophonic Caribbean, which I term as being low trust societies. There isn't a high degree of trust existing in the societies as when juxtaposed um, to, to, to Asian, um, as well as Middle Eastern economies. Uh, those economies tend to operate on high degrees of trust um, and contracts, etc., can be more relational and don't need to be highly specified and, and formalized. Um, so we do operate in these types of societies, and it is very important that during this period that employers, particularly those in the family-owned enterprises, pay keen attention to the opportunity to build trust between themselves and the employees. Now, uh, some articles have emerged in the Harvard Business Review, um, amongst a, a couple of other business journals, which are actually uh, speaking to how employees and potential employees moving on out or moving out of this, this COVID pandemic are actually viewing companies based on or predicated on the way that they would have treated their employees during the period of COVID. Now that in itself, therefore, provides uh, uh, an opportunity for many of these family-owned enterprises um, and these smaller enterprises who perhaps may not have as much capital to invest in marketing, et cetera, to show that what they actually uh, care about is their employees. At that point, can be driven home um, when they are interviewing persons and when persons are coming home. Now, the fifth point, and, and this is going to um, lead me into just about three more points to, 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 to wrap up with the broader context, is the fact that now, um, because of family-owned enterprises and the nature of the post-colonial state um, in the Caribbean economies, you find that there is a generational gap that exists between um, the owners of capital and the owners of these family-owned enterprises um, and the, the, the other 
perhaps younger persons, younger members of the family who are involved. So the, the fact that COVID has actually forced many of those older persons to get online, start learning of the technology, using Zoom, using the online platforms, it actually has given the, the family-owned enterprises a tremendous opportunity to bridge that gener generational gap as regards the usage of technology. Like I can give you an, an, an analogy here in Guyana. Um, you know, many of these family-owned enterprises, the, the principal or the founder is quite frugal um, in, as regards how they, they keep the money very close to them um, and they, they're, they're lax um, in terms of investing in technology. One before is his, his, um, his father, who is relating the, the story to me, his father did not even want to invest um, in Zoom subscription. And after they realized, after his father realized that this thing cuts off after, after 40 minutes, he immediately paid for the Zoom subscription. So, you know, it's, a, it's an analogy to, 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 to exemplify how, how this is beginning to transform. Now, within the broader context, what does this do? This actually accelerates the rate at which we can move towards uh, the, the, or reaping the fruits of the fourth industrial revolution um, that has been highlighted and framed by, by Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum. So we can actually accelerate the rate um, of which that fourth industrial revolution comes about. Um, the other thing within the broader context is that now we can begin to map um, that fourth industrial revolution and the use of digital uh, technology and business into the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Because um, as you all perhaps have seen, what the impact has been on the environment of persons not traveling um, and all of the unnecessary driving around that one would do during the day just to go from meeting to meeting. I think meetings are going to actually become more centralized and you're going to see a lot of that traffic um, that you would have coming from commuters, commercial persons moving from one location to the other during the day, being minimized. That, I mean, if we look at some of the knock-on effects, we'll reduce stress of the persons from transiting, make things much easier, increase productivity, and keep many of these uh, meetings that, that, that are pointless and just go on and on, very short, to the point, and, and, and increase productivity. But the last point within the broader context, which I, I, I want to drive home, and I think is one of the most important, Family-owned enterprises uh, comprise a significant quantum of employment within the Caribbean region. But what you find is that as a result of what I identified earlier regarding the stylized facts, the exposure to risk for those uh, employees is very high. And I do hope that as a result of what has happened here and the acute nature of the impact of COVID, and the, the, the rate at which it has happened, um, that we see a resilience through risk management, through proper succession planning, through business processes and improving organizational management and efficiency. I hope that we are able to see an increase in the resilience with which those vulnerable groups um, actually have and reducing the, the, the quantum or the degree of exposure to risk that those employees face as a result of poor organizational management stemming from the culture of family-owned enterprises. So, Mr. Chairman, um, I, I, I've tried my best to, to be succinct as possible. Um, and, I, and of course, it, it's a pleasure and I'm very open to taking any questions or giving comments further in that regard. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.